Welcome, everybody. Um, before introducing and thanking, you, thanking our guests for today's panel, we'd like to thank you very much and thank you subscribers and shareholders of Box Europe for their support because it enables us to keep hosting that kind of events and keep publishing quality journalism and great cartoons, as you'll see in a second. Keep translating also in as many languages as possible. And uh, last but not least, that enables us to remain independent, which is so important today. So thank you also, um, we thank you, thank also our long standing partner, the Cartoon Movement. And uh, just note that this event is being recorded so that we produce every time a video with the best moments of the life and we will publish it in the next few days in our website. So um, you can add your questions straight away to our two guests in the chat in the language of your choice because we will translate them for our guests. You can even write in Chinese, I suppose, or in all sorts of languages, maybe not uh, Czech or, but you know, the main European languages and we will ask them for you. And uh, we will reactivate your microphone at around, I would say 20 to 15 minutes or so before the end of the live so that you can have a, an informal conversation with our guest. And just before we start, this is a tradition at Vox Europe in our live, we'd like you to write in the chat, in the chat box where you base right now. So myself, I'm based in Paris. So thank you for that. Uh, okay, so just to present very quickly the subject, a year ago we had uh, a live also on the 2000, year 2022 in cartoons, which is kind of a retrospective of the main events of the year. And we had written, uh, can we still laugh? And we're asking the same question today, given the, the, the kind of events we have we had last year compared with the year before, we realized that 20, 2023 is kind of kind of encore uh, in the face of all the catastrophes, the natural, natural disasters, the unending war, second year war in Ukraine, now a new one in the Middle East, and of course the rise of the radical right and the the pre camp or the campaign uh, in America. So uh, that's one of the questions we want to ask our two guests, because we know uh, that, of course, as a full journalistic genre, cartoonists have a real capacity to distance themselves in a way from events. And we would like to know and ask Stelina and Emanuele, Stelina Chen and Emanuele Del Rosso, if they could share some of the secrets of the art. Yes, so thank you, Catherine. So I'm Gianpaolo Accardo, uh, co-founder and editor-in-chief of Vox Europe. Let us introduce our guests, Stellina Chen and Emanuele De Rosso. Stellina, you're a freelancer. You're based in Taipei, though you share some time between Taiwan and France. You regularly work with known uh, news media like The Initium in Taiwan and Story International, Le Monde, France 24 and Le Temps. Uh, in Europe. You're also a member of Cartoonists for Peace and of cartoon syndication platform Cartoon Movement. You're also an author of uh, comics and you just published Dans la Cour des Grands, Pataio publisher. Uh, we will publish uh, the link uh, to, the, to your book in the chat. Emanuele De Rosso, you're a, a freelancer. You graduated in journalism at the University of Groningen. You run a communication company, uh, the, the Rosso Studio, and you collaborate with the cartoon syndication platform, Cartoon Movement. You also publish regularly in Corriere International, Le Monde Internationale, Materia Rinnovabile, and of course, Vox Europe. And you are a deputy editor, deputy, uh, sorry, deputy director of the European Press Prize. We will also publish the links both to your uh, company and to the European Press Prize in the, uh, in the chat. So let's start with our conversation. Thank you, uh, Jean Paolo. I completely forgot to present myself, apart from the fact I'm based in Paris. So I'm co-founder and editorial director of Vox Europe. And together with Jean Paolo, we, we love uh, moderating these uh, live events and in particular the cartoon uh, events. So because I think we, you can you can add some uh, a, a different point of view, different angle on uh, international and European events. So as I said, 2023 wasn't any better than the year before, but we usually associate cartoons with kind of hu humor, if not laughter for, for sometimes. 
hence the title of this life, but maybe the title is completely wrong. So maybe there's no no way we can laugh, but maybe you, you can give a, a, another view of the, uh, the events of this year. So um, we'd like to know, just to start with, to Emanuele, uh, maybe, how did you, how was it for you to draw cartoons last year? Was it any different for the, for the years before? And what did you learn through the, through that time, how you manage, where do you find inspiration in case of quite similar events, a repetition of events? Well, and then we first of all, thanks the for the Rama. invite. Thanks for the invite, Catherine and John Paolo, and also Paul that left the conversation. Um, I need to I need to specify that I'm deputy director of the European Cartoon Award. Not of the, the, the European Press Prize, I'm head of communication, so I need to distinguish these two things. Um, but yeah, so after your question, um, I think the main characteristic of 2023 for me was that it was so full of awful events that there was always a source for inspiration for cartoons. So we, we joke among cartoonists, we, we always joke about it, you know, like uh, when you have an year like when Donald Trump is, a, is a, for example, president or things like that. There's material forever, and 2023, unfortunately, uh, started and ended basically like that. Um, so that's the first thing. It's it's like it was not different from any other year, other than the fact that there was more uh, to draw about. I think, and uh, and about the inspiration, um, um, well, I just read the news, uh, you know, and uh, I try to cover as many different topics as I can calculating that I do mainly uh, cartoons on international topics. I live in Amsterdam, but I'm Italian. It's difficult to cover local news, although it's very important to do so. Um, so I just uh, try and uh, and be up to date with the news. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was on vacation for, for one month and I didn't have my drawing tablet and I didn't uh, keep up with the news. And uh, so many things happened in 30 days. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, that's how it is. And then Stelina, may I ask the same question? For me, uh, it's kind of the same. I also have a year, 2023, full of kind of bad news. I remember I did the retrospective of 2023. And uh, I wrote like, what a shitty year. <laughs> at, at the middle of the year, it was summer. And so the news are full of, uh, it's the hottest year of the world. And 2023 has has broken out the record of, uh, you know, the temperature is the hottest of all year. And then uh, the Ukraine war was was continuing. And now it's almost two years. And then and in October, another war broke out uh, between Israel and, uh, and the Hamas. Um, so for me, also 2023, there's a lot of inspiration for me, all basically all the news. I also try to cover uh, uh, whatever I see, because actually, usually I, I work for a Chinese media. So I, I do local news as well. And for the European media, I do more of the international news. Um, so I try to cover the two. But of course, Chinese news sometimes is too local to submit to the international media. Um, so yeah, that's basically 2023 for me. Okay, thank you. So now we're going to go through um, uh, the cartoons you chose you chose to uh, show for 2023. So Gian Paolo will uh, show them. So that's the first cartoon of the year in January that you chose. Um, maybe if you'd like to comment. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, this cartoon. I mean. Gun control was is always a big problem in America, and that there's basically one mass shooting uh, every month or every week in the, in the United States. But I remember uh, it was shocking to me because we were still, you know, at the kind of like the buffering periods from 2022 to 2023, and already there were like a huge mass shooting in America in January. Um, and I saw the statistic; it was breaking another record in America. So that's that's why I did this cartoon. You, so maybe the next, next one, uh, unless you want to say something, of course, Emanuele. You're free to I, match I each other. Uh, I was just thinking that it's very, very powerful and very clever. I really like the style of Stelina. 
Um, so yeah, great cartoon. Okay, so like Ukraine, yeah. Yeah, so this this is uh, well the one year mark of the war in Ukraine. I try to I I usually don't draw death as an image, so this is very like, an exception for me. But I try to extend uh, the meaning of the cartoon uh, outside uh, the Ukrainian war. So the balloons on top um, contain the war the the word the wars instead. So I thought it was it was kind of like a dark humor cartoon, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I was really um, I was really also emotionally struck by the the Ukrainian war when it started. So I really felt it strongly. That's also one of the things that usually drives me with good cartoons. Uh, it's it's easier when you are um, when you have strong emotions about it, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, that's yeah, I'd it. say I, I didn't recognize your style straight away for this that particular one. And why 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 don't you draw? I mean, why do you decide not to uh, to portrait death in that way? Is there a reason? I, I think it's uh, um, it's an exaggeration that I try not to do, and I know that some cartoonists are very good at using it as an image or using mm -hmm. uh, you know like like for example Thierry Droya, the Dutch cartoonist mm -hmm. he is he uses it the image of of death uh, way more often and and he's very good at it and i I just don't feel like using it um but yeah, so this is an exception. Um, and I tried it and I think it, it came out, uh, um, quite all right. Okay, thanks. Do you want to add something, Stelina? Uh, I remember this one, actually. I remember the war, uh, the oldest death celebrating the Ukraine war anniversary. And I, I remember vividly that there was one death at the corner that he has glasses. <laughs> I find it very cute. <laughs> I mean, of course, the, the subject is not cute at all, like, <laughs> but the way that yeah. it's depicted, you know, it's it's uh, with humor and all that. All right, so that's me again. Um, this is uh, this is news that uh, was also very big in Italy. Uh, this cartoon went actually in Italian uh, in a couple of newspapers because there's these. Uh, well, uh, I think it happened in France as well. But so uh, works of art uh, um, being attacked by environmental uh, environmentalists or uh, activists for the environment to try and raise attention to the climate crisis. And uh, um, there was a, a huge debate in Italy because uh, of, uh, of the fact that uh, these episodes were happening more often there. And that, uh, of course, uh, every mayor in every city was getting very annoyed, and then uh, that the the walls and the works of art would be damaged and so on. But the the ink uh, or the paint would be uh, washable, so that's just a message, you know. And, and then I tried to compare uh, a painting defaced by an activist, and then uh, the same the same place defaced by the climate crisis to try and give a perspective to the two issues because it's usually very easy for especially with populist uh, governments like the one that we have in Italy it's very easy for them to um to to kind of derail the conversation using a small fact um and uh, make it and finding uh, a scapegoat for something or blaming somebody else for something and just uh, um just to basically change uh, change the topic you know um yeah so that's it Delina, do you want to add something yeah i mean i was just saying that the, I, I i like how it's compared like you know with the division line because usually this kind of uh, compare uh should has to be done well and i think in this case it's it's it's, it's well done that's me again i'm gonna get tired um, so this cartoon uh, is a remake of the famous image of the fish that eats another fish that is eaten by another fish. Um, so I, I just put one of the fish just to be sure that the, the, the uh, how do you say, the, the well-known image of the three fish uh, would be understood. 
but then I put the Russian bear and then I put uh, the Chinese dragon eating the bear. I mean, it's just a visual metaphor. So this is a very, let's say, generic uh, kind of cartoon. So it's not related to a specific event. But I thought that the image was very fitting because, of course, uh, China is there next to Russia and it's bigger than Russia. And then Russia is there next to Ukraine. So I just drew basically the action uh, of the three uh, eating each other, let's say, or like one eating the other. Yeah, I'd be curious to to have uh, Stelina's take on this one because the People's Republic of China dragon, maybe seen from Taiwan, uh, has a special significance. I also do a lot of, uh, I also use a lot of times the uh, dragon to represent uh, China, actually. Although I don't really like to use dragon because it's, it's it falls into kind of this uh, cliche image but in this one i will have to say this one i like very much because of the structure of the painting from right to to left you know from the biggest to the smallest also represent you know power wise like china has the biggest power level and then russia and then ukraine comparison from the biggest to this also shows the different like the imbalance if I can also add another thing, sorry, Gian Paolo, I don't want to interrupt you. It's just uh, one detail. Um, I think it's more important now than before the fact that uh, a cartoon uh, can be read uh, uh, also from uh, from the two directions because uh, cartoons are published online and uh, the Arabic word, uh, uh, Arabic cartoonists or Middle Eastern cartoonists. Uh, cartoonists uh, tend to draw from the other side, of course, because they write uh, from right to left. So when one manages to draw a cartoon that works in both directions, uh, it's actually very good because uh, then it can be appreciated by different types of audiences, which is not always the case because the cartoon, the previous one about the work of art and the defacing um, works only from left to right. Okay, just uh, Stine, I was uh, willing to ask, um, so if uh, continental China is represented as a dragon, how does one usually represent uh, Taiwan's Republic of China? Yeah, that, that's a very good question because uh, I, I, I like to see how the international world uh, draw about Taiwan because usually when they draw China as a dragon, Taiwan is usually a little dragon. A tinier dragon, or or in comparison, very 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 small dragon, or something that be you know that was eaten by the dragon, or or something is just uh in the in the hand of the dragon. But actually, even me, I do it. I do the same because, as a, you know, as a Chinese, uh, it's true that we are not as, uh, you know, as a biggest power as, as like in China or the United States. So like, if I just draw Taiwan, the shape of Taiwan, no one would know exactly where it is or what it is. Uh, so usually I, I use also use a lot of, of, uh, of China in the drawing. So in comparison, and people know that it's Taiwan. Hmm. Okay, since we're with you, um, Stelina, this is a, a cartoon you made in um, uh, May, I think, uh, on the eve of the election yes. in Turkey. Um, would you like to say a bit about it? Yeah, this one, this one is is really funny because um, I think because there's also in Turkey is also two rounds of uh, I think it was two rounds of uh, of voting, and everyone was kind of expecting that the other one would be you know kind of push out with with the with the election in May, um. So I drew this cartoon of a toilet and the the hand is flushing other one out of uh out of uh, Turkey and behind you can see it's a voting box and it's written democracy, which means that, you know, they're trying to use democracy to uh, to get rid of the uh, other one, but eventually, of course, they didn't. And around the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it's particularly fitty, I have to say, uh, the, the toilet. Um, <laughs> So elections are a topic that uh, cartoonists often uh, deal with because it's news, because um, then you can make uh, uh, good caricatures of uh, leaders. And 
on this topic specifically, uh, both you and Emanuele had uh, a take. Here is Emanuele's one. There's also a bit of wishful thinking maybe in it. Um, you want to say something about it, uh, Emma? Yes. Emma, so Emma one... just before you comment, yeah. I just wanted to say that you, to the audience that you can put your questions in the chat. Don't hesitate. We will ask them for you. Sorry, Emma. No, no, of course. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm happy to, to see questions from the audience as well. Um, this cartoon is, uh, I I made it before the first round of elections in Turkey. So yeah, there was a tiny bit of uh, um, of uh, wishful thinking and the possibility that Erdogan would be outvoted, which, yeah, it didn't happen. So the idea is, uh, you know, you use uh, the image, the, the stereotypical image for the voting, of course, is the ballot box. So there is this... Uh, how do you call it? Ferris wheel with the uh, with the ballot boxes, uh, and uh, in my view, that was the last uh, chance uh, for Turkey for a while to achieve change uh, in a democratic way. Um, so I just thought uh, I would put it uh, that way, you know, last ride uh, and people going to vote. Uh, um, yeah, and then in the end, they didn't uh, they didn't manage, unfortunately. Okay, so we keep with good news. Um, no, joking. The good news is sometimes no news. So uh, this is another topic that we had to deal with uh, in the news. Um, Stelina, would you like to remember us uh, the story of um, the Ocean Gate and Titan? This, yeah, this one. It was. I think it was in summer. Um, and I remember the comparison was done by quite a lot of media as well. So of course, this is not something new. Uh, I mean, this this structure of comparing uh, Titan and the migrants, you know, how how unfair is the treatment uh, among all the medias that they give coverage to the, all these billionaires uh, trapped in Titan and and all the resources that they use to to look for this the submarines. And on the other side, the the migrants, the shipwreck, um, like not much media was trying to to cover it, but it's just, you know, as I said before, like, you know, when Emma did the comparison, I, I don't usually like to do this because um, it, it has to be, you know, it has to be a good one. And in this one, I think it works because um, there's this hook on, on the left corner of, of the drawing and you see that it's trying to pull to the side that the, and we see life on um, Titan one. So the, the media coverage is trying to like, is it's way more than, than the, the migrant one. So that's just what I want to show to the audience. I'm very happy about this cartoon um, because it's a very simple idea. And that's usually for me, the goal is to reduce things to a very, very simple image. And, um, and this one uh, is uh, is about uh, uh, all the school girls who were poisoned in Iran. There was at some point this uh, this news that was coming out of uh, um, a high number of um, of school girls being poisoned because, of course, in Iran uh, at the moment uh, um, it's difficult or impossible for women to also get a good instructions and so on. Um, and uh, and so I just use the opscotch game, uh, putting all the threats that uh, uh, that uh, women and girls are facing in Iran, and um, and I thought, uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. And uh, I thought it was very powerful. And I was also very very angry about the topic, so maybe that's why it came out uh, um, quite strongly. You want to comment on this one, uh, Stelina? I remember this one and it was published on Le Monde, I think. And yeah. I really like this one because it was so simple, the concept and the, the game is universal for everyone to understand it in all the countries because that's how little, you know, little kids or children, they play on the ground. And actually this is just three simple elements like book, uh, the game and the girl, and it works perfectly. Stelina, I was wondering uh, whether, uh, as a woman cartoonist, and there are very few uh, woman cartoonists, I think it's maybe one on 50, maybe, you know, because of cartoon movement, maybe you have uh, better statistics. Um, but do you think that you have a, a different, uh, as a woman cartoonist, a uh, different approach to news or to topics that uh, deal with uh, uh, women in general, women's struggle, uh, violence over women or women's rights? Huh? 
Uh, I mean, of course, actually, I, I just talked about this uh, the other day with a friend. Of course, like, um, as a women cartoonist, you kind of focus on things maybe a bit different. I mean, I wouldn't say the style is much different. Uh, although I do see uh, this trend of like women cartoons tend to draw uh, with um, this kind of less, I don't know, with a bit of uh, this tender um, way of describing things. But of course, this is not a, it's not to, to everyone. I've seen also like uh, women cartoons that has a very uh, spicy, you know, spicy taste on, on cartoons. Uh, but it's true that I think women cartoons, they have, a, maybe a, we have a special focus on uh, how women are being treated in the world, uh, especially in Iran. And I remember uh, in the talk that I gave with international Amnesty International, and I was I was talking about the, the treatment I see women getting in Afghanistan or Iran, and while I draw them, actually, the topics really touched me in a deeper sense that uh, it's really unfair that some of us we get to have a life like this, and some of them they they don't. And and while I draw, you know, while I draw the cartoon, I feel really like. I feel touched and and I feel really like also depressed in some way. So since we're talking about being depressed, <laughs> last summer was particularly hot, actually the hottest ever uh, on record. Um, and so of course you reacted, um, both of you reacted to it. Um, you want to comment on this, Delina? Yeah, uh, this one. Yeah, I remember the summer I drew. I drew so many cartoons on. Uh, you know, the summer being the hottest, and this one I was trying to put all of the natural disaster that happened in summer all together, uh, like the drought, so fish uh, having the fish tank. And uh, we're losing, uh, we're losing the ice and two in the two poles. So polar bear is bringing uh, an ice cube, and then of course the wildfire. So the tree he carries a fire, a fire extinguisher. So all all of them they, they have something that they need to get over uh, 2023 summer, and I I I I think it's gonna be the same for next year for this year as well. Okay, so the next uh, one. Okay, Manuele, you have to explain this one. Yeah, so, um, well, Amsterdam is uh, invaded by tourists. So that was something that I really did because it's impossible to uh, walk in the streets of the center. Of course, it's a problem that many other cities have, but I mean, this was really like first-hand experience for me. Um, and... Uh, and uh, I just thought about the Godzilla movies, uh, you know, when people run away screaming Godzilla, and uh, and I just uh, and I just imagined, you know, these these big tourists going around uh, and searching for souvenirs with a selfie stick. Uh, I thought it was really funny. This is uh, maybe rarely one of the cartoons that uh, I drew, thinking, "Oh, this is actually a funny image," um, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very big, big topic because it's actually related to all the other topics uh, um, that we're talking about, you know, especially climate change, uh, uh, travels with uh, with uh, airplanes uh, and the sustainability in cities. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm actually surprised that it's not um, more in the news, maybe because it's it's as, as exactly as climate change. It's something that it's that it's just uncontrollable, but also an issue too large. To be explained and also it brings a lot of money tourism is a uh, uh, part of the economy of many cities that are now dying out because exactly because of tourism so it's this kind of like process like self-fulfilling prophecy you know cities becoming museums instead mm -hmm. um and yeah it, it's also very frustrating for me okay talking about sarcasm um there's a question from yang ti chen which I'm going to read. I'm particularly interested in the sarcasm in political cartoons. I always find it genius and sometimes, but sometimes I might not get the idea as I'm not an expert of everything that's going on in the world. I'm curious about the approach. Is it more to make the people who already know the issues feel connected or to make the issues reaching 
some form of education, maybe as many people as possible. So I suppose that's a question for both of you. I don't know who wants to start it, Stelina? Um, I mean, of course, the cartoons, I mean, if you know about the news, it's always easier to get, you know, if, if I mean, if there's some sort of humor or some sort of joke or some sort of sarcasm uh, in the cartoon, uh, it's always it's always easier to know the you know what is going on to understand the cartoons, but not of course not always. Um, and usually when I'm doing a cartoon using sarcasm or or something ironic, I try to do it as universal as possible. Which means that uh, I remember once I I saw Emma's uh, drawing, and I remember I texted you. I said it was about the the dunk tank. I don't know if you remember. Like you draw a cartoon about um about yes, that thing, and I, I, I wrote to you like uh oh I I didn't <laughs> yeah 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 and I I wrote to you I remember I said like I didn't know it was a universal thing because you know if you if you draw something using sarcasm and it's not a universal thing of course people if you, if they don't know about the news and they don't know about you know what what is about and it's even harder to understand. So I just try to use as universal as possible uh, if I do something that's, you know, it's interesting I don't know about you. It, what do you. It's interesting because in yeah. particular for you, Stelina, of course you, you're kind of in between two worlds uh, with some of the references in Asia are not known here and vice versa, but um, it's interesting. Yeah, of course, like uh, there's, there's some cartoons that I draw uh, about local news and uh, yeah. and of course there is the pun uh, in Mandarin um, and then I have uh, followers that they're they're not from you know Asia or not from Taiwan and they would never be able to get it so they would actually ask questions of like what does it mean then I have to answer <laughs> like I have to answer everything of like, like because the slippers pronounce it in Mandarin in this way, so that's how you get it. But even without understanding the concept, uh, I remember the person says like, "I I cannot fully uh, understand it, but still I in a way that I know there is a you know there's sarcasm linked uh, linked with you know all together all these elements." Okay, thank you, and uh, Emma. I think. Uh... I'm better at uh, um, this cartoon that you're showing now proves exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. But uh, uh, I think <laughs> I, I prefer I prefer visual metaphors instead of uh, cartoons with text because uh, um, they are more um, exportable. You know, like you, you they can be understood uh, from by people that don't speak that specific language. Um, so in this case, this cartoon has uh, some irony instead. That's exactly the opposite of what I said. Uh, and so uh, I did it because uh, the idea I had, uh, I thought it would work well with the text, but I really try and uh, and not use uh, any kind of text uh, or as, as few lines as possible. Um, and um, yeah, and I think that's the that's the, the two big groups of cartoons. There are cartoons, uh, for example, if uh, um, if one likes sarcasm or irony, I would suggest uh, uh, Shapat, for example, because he's a master of dialogue, and he creates the situations in which there's these like weird oppositions or like characters saying things, and their faces are very expressive, and he's very very good at that. Um, and also, for example, uh, um, what's his name? The cartoon is from the Washington Post, Michael the Other. He's also very good at that. Uh, otherwise, there are cartoons like, for example, this one of Stalina, which for me is more like a visual metaphor of what the situation is. And it's way easier to, to present it to a larger public. And it still is funny, but I don't, don't call it sarcasm, if you get what I mean. Um, so, so this one is... is, is... I, it's about the natural disasters. Um, so yeah, again, the I, I, I agree completely with, with Emma that I also try to use uh, as least words as possible. Put a word bubble in my drawing because once is that you, you need a punchline or you need a dialogue. And the language is a problem for me because actually I sometimes I publishing the 
European media and French media. And I do speak French. So one is like, should I put in French or should I put in English? And then if I publish in, in Taiwan, should I put in Mandarin? So then the, the language is always a problem for me. So I would always opt for the cartoon without words or just, you know, some, some label on, on the objects. But I rarely do cartoons with the dialogue with a word bubble. And this one, uh, it's also something that I think it could be quite universal, this game. Uh, and of course, you know, here I also use the death as a representation of uh, in this cartoon. And you see that it's shooting the, the bowl and the bowl in this case is earth. And I remember at that time there were, there were so many natural disasters, one after another. So I just thought I will combine all of them and, and do this cartoon. Yeah, this one is um, the very famous uh, doomsday clock, uh, you know, that uh, was, uh, I think, during the Cold War, was something that they started doing in the U.S., presenting uh, how near the end was. And it was like five minutes or two minutes or one minute, according to how likely it was uh, to have a nuclear holocaust uh, caused by the States or by Russia, if I remember correctly. So I I I just uh, try to use the same thing, but uh, but using the earth instead, and making it so that all the part, uh, all the time that we we have wasted, um, trying to or like just uh, pretending that we're trying to find solutions for climate change and just burning the earth, uh, has passed, and now we remain with uh, um, with uh, just a bunch of minutes, uh, um, and uh, yeah, the time is uh, almost uh, almost done. Again, a visual metaphor anyway, you know, so just a, just a e very simple image. Uh, this, is, this is the cartoon that I really, I really, really like. Uh, I mean, last year was kind of the year of uh, artificial intelligence. So that's how, that's why I made this cartoon. And the, the reason I really like this cartoon was because in my mind, I was making this cartoon in the sense that the, the last one, the robot, the AI, he turned and put his end up and is trying to stop the evolution of humanity. But actually, uh, I, I remember one of the cartoonists' friend. He uh, he sent me a message. He says like, ah, the AI he's he's turned and he tries to he tries to high five uh, the last guy. So he's like, that's not my intention. But um, you know, everyone kind of interpret the, the cartoon. But of course, it works both way. Uh, you know, artificial intelligence could be helping humanity, or it could be, uh, you know, stopping us all. Like, uh, like in, in Matrix, you know, like we are going to all because of uh, AI. Well, this one is about, the, you know, the right wing. Uh, in in Europe, this is after the Dutch election, and then I put another bird like shooting on the on the wing. That's uh, Argentina. Uh, that's Hollywood on strike. Uh, and of course, for, actually for this cartoon to understand that you actually, that was, you know, on the country of what I said before as well, that I tried to use less words so to create less, you know, boundary to understand it. But this one, actually, you have to understand that it's on hold. And then, you know, all the other um, the characters, they left and they were on strike. So it means like Hollywood was on hold. Uh, time running out for Ukraine, so I use you know the the same glass also used as a representation of time out, and that Zelensky uh, was speaking up. Uh, it was after the war between and Hamas, and he was asking international attention. Uh, and this about the election in Taiwan uh, uh, like one week ago and uh, this was I tried to do it you know uh, in a way that you can see all the elements uh, that's playing out in this election so in the background you see in the shadow that's the dragon so of course again I, like Emma I use dragon to represent China and then on the other side is eagle 
since I use animal already, I just try to use two animals and both of their hands touches the, the figure in the middle. So it's like the two countries trying to meddle or trying to influence uh, the Taiwanese to whether, how you're gonna vote for, the, for this election. Okay, interesting. You. You, you used again shadows. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I really like to uh, to hide details in the shadow. Mm -hmm. And it's a woman who is voting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this time it is. <laughs> so this is pretty much um, so the, Yeah, this, yeah, Taiwan always in between China and, and the United States. Now, Emanuele, sorry, this, all these cartoons are from um, Sydney. We will have some. Oh, they're great. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the big topic of the end of the year. I would just, I would just quickly, year. quickly do a... Like, this is, you know, basically just the, the war has split the, the, the world in two parts. One, Israel and... that's the media coverage yeah so this this is um because uh the ukrainian war started to get uh um forgotten by the main news outlets because uh there was a, another big conflict going on which is in the nature of news but from a ukrainian perspective uh, also for people that i know and some comments that i've seen uh, when i started drawing cartoons about palestine um of course, uh, it's very enraging because uh, they are being forgotten. And when you are forgotten by the public, by the public opinion and by the newspapers, then shortly after you start being forgotten by the politicians because, uh, of course, they care about what people think. Um, so, yeah, I basically drew uh, this, uh, this newspaper kind of flying away or already uh, already flying uh, with, uh, with uh, Zelensky uh, hanging on it and trying to bring it down. That was the idea. Um, yeah, question to both uh, regarding this particular topic. Uh, I mean, the Hamas-Israel war and the situation in the Middle East in general is particularly sensitive and divisive. So how do you go about that? And what do you think of the media coverage around uh, this topic in general? Uh, if I can start uh, um, a reply, and I think that the... The situation is very complicated because there is, uh, in my view, a overlap, uh, um, a double overlap. So one part, it's it's re it's a religion overlap on one side. So you have got like the the Jewish community and the Israeli government, and Israel very cleverly is uh, is actually using religion to justify themselves. Um, and on the other side, instead, you have an overlap Hamas Palestine, which is also. Um, totally untrue or or like uh, for the large part untrue so the difficulty there in drawing a cartoon about the topic is that um both both sides don't represent entirely things and then there's also another difficulty which is that if i need to represent something that happens in palestine i cannot use the Hamas flag because that doesn't represent palestine so you you want to try and play with the images that people know but at the same time you don't want to stereotype stereotypes too much the issue um, and of course uh, if you draw uh, in favor of Palestine uh, somebody will be very fast in reminding you that uh, the terroristic attack was held by Hamas first uh, and Israel was responding to that but then you also need to discuss about the fact that Hamas is not Palestine so it's really difficult to get out of the issue so I found it very difficult, honestly, and I've been uh, receiving some uh, some messages about some of the cartoons as well. Elena, uh, for me, for me, it's, it's the same. Like it's also it's a sensitive and, and a complicated topic for me as well. So basically, I just draw uh, on what I care about, which is on the humanitarian level. Um, first, uh, the one that you showed before, you know, the, the fact that the war has splitted uh, the world into two sides, 
and I draw a lot of cartoons on uh, women and children, how how they are kind of the biggest victims uh, in this war. So I drew uh, that uh, the, the Gaza has become a cemetery for women and children. So basically, I focus a lot on the humanitarian level 